Hello, hello, hallelujah. Happy Resurrection Week. Welcome our prayer partners. It's good to have you back here again in a new month, a new week, a new season. And we thank God so much. This is the day that the Lord has made. We rejoice and we are glad in it. And we celebrate the goodness of the Lord for taking us throughout the weekend and bringing us to a new week. We are so grateful for the gift of life and for the gift of salvation. This is a time that we are remembering that Christ arose from the dead. And because of that, we have hope. We have faith. We know that death is not the end. The grave is not the end. And if you are there and you are mourning the loss of a loved one like we are, yes, we are going through a season of loss and grief. But I want to remind each and every one of us that Christ is alive. Amen. Christ is not dead. And because he is alive, we can have hope for tomorrow. So this is our, our daily hour of prayer. The hour we come to the prayer altar every morning, it's afternoon, some places, it's in the evening. So regardless of what time it is where you are, this is your hour of fellowship. It is the hour of impartation. It's the hour of power. It's an hour of breakthrough. Let me tell you, when nothing else is working, try prayer. If nothing else is making a way, just try prayer. You know why? Prayer is a weapon that God has given each and every one of us because prayer is dependence on God. Prayer is acknowledging that you cannot make it on your own. You need God. And God loves the fellowship of uh, the believer. And the only way we can communicate with him is through prayer and, of course, through his word. When we read his word, it is him talking to us because he has already stated. But when we pray, we are having a conversation with him. We can tell him and we can listen and he can also tell us and he can talk to us as we talk back to him. So this is the hour we delight in coming to the altar because of this altar we believe in the power of prayer and the power of word. This is your host today for the next three days, Pastor Zippy. I am always here at this particular time and hour and day. And I'm so blessed. I'm coming from Pacific Northwest right here in the West Coast. And here we are uh, addicted to Jesus, just like my brother tells me every time to be addicted to Jesus. Hallelujah. Good morning, my pastor. <laughs> Apostle. God bless you so much. It is always a good um, opportunity to come to the presence of the Lord and we shall be blessed. How are you, Brother Joseph, uh, uh, Sister Paula, Pastor William? God bless you. Always a, a joy and a delight. Please share the broadcast and uh, let somebody know that the hour of prayer is here. Here you can bring your prayer requests. We will lift them to the Lord, and we will trust that God is going to show himself mighty on your behalf. Are you watching us from Oge Media? Thank you so much. Uh, this is your daily hour of prayer. So if you are a fan of Oge Media, just know that at this particular time in East Africa, we have an hour that we can come to the presence of the Lord. Just tarry with us for one hour and you will be blessed by the ministry of the word and the ministry of prayer. And I believe the Lord will do you good and great things. Thank you so much, Sister Gasheri. God bless you. Thank you for always uh, being faithful to share. May the Lord bless you. My name is Pastor Zipora Maina, a.k.a. Pastor Zippy. I'm so blessed. I'm the founder and CEO of Rescue Mission and Prayer Network International or Remap International. We are delighted because in a month's time, we shall be having our annual conference in person. We pray here every Saturday on Zoom with people from across the world. And we are so blessed that this uh, season coming in the month of May, we are going to have uh, the conference. It's happening in person and we will have four good days of sitting at the feet of Jesus. Once again, we want to invite you to support by prayer, support by coming, your presence, and support by your resources. 
It doesn't matter which part of the world you are at. I tell people that money does not come from the USA. Our help does not come from diaspora. Our help comes from the Lord. That is why you have people everywhere that are wealthy and able to stand with the gospel. So whatever corner of the world you are at, you're welcome to uh, support this ministry. And when I want you to know that every dollar, every shilling, every CD, every... Sister Georgia, what do you call I was trying to read the currency of your country. <laughs> good to see you my sister whatever currency you are we want you to know that this is a fertile ground we are not here to make profit anything you sow in this kingdom it will go to the ministry of the word of god and uh, it will sustain uh, uh, those that are, are serving at the altar i have always done things a little different because i am different because i understand myself and uh, I know that God has made each and every one of us unique. So me, I don't do things because they are done by other people. I always seek God's way. And one of the things that I do is when we are having a conference, we request people to sponsor themselves. You are sponsoring yourself. You are not paying. You are sponsoring yourself. Why do people in Africa always want to be sponsored? Because we have a begging mentality. Why don't you ask yourself, that person sponsoring you, where do they get the money? So I teach people to sponsor themselves because they value what they are sponsoring themselves for. Amen. Do you know, I was once a student in the university and I paid a lot of money, which was borrowed money. I left university with a big loan. Why? Because I valued what I was getting from that university. So I was willing to pay even borrowed money. Yes, Sister Joy Joy, let us teach believers to sponsor themselves. Believers have remained poor because they are always waiting to be sponsored. Guess who sponsors them? The unbelievers. Then you are wondering why the unbeliever is controlling you. The unbeliever is dictating what you do, where you go, how you eat, when you eat, when you sleep, when you wake up, because they are sponsoring you. Sponsor yourself. <laughs> So I paid a lot of money on loan in the university because I believed that what I was pursuing was valuable. Let me tell you, the day I met with Jesus and the more I have continued to walk with him, I have learned that there is nothing more valuable than what Jesus did for me and for you. That is why for me, I will sponsor myself to go anywhere to hear this gospel, to add a value to my Christian life. Hey! Hallelujah. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. So, Sister Jojo, your currency is called what? Too Greek. <laughs> nice, 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 nice. One day, one of these days, I'll be in Mongolia. So, I'll come and uh, use the currency and I'll be blessed. Amen. Good to see you, all of you. Pastor William, thank you. I want to welcome you. So, join us for the conference from May 1 to May 5. It's going to be a time of refreshing in the presence of the Lord. Our theme comes from the book of Acts chapter 3 and verse 19. Repent ye and believe the gospel and times of refreshing will come to you and of course to your children. Amen. 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 Welcome, Brother Hilary teach. God bless you. So if you are uh, willing to support us financially, uh, there are some numbers that are passing across your screen. Uh, there is the USA number, which you can send your cash up, your Zelle, and your Venmo. If you are in East Africa, you can use the M-Pesa number. And if you are somewhere else outside East Africa and outside the USA, you can use paypal.me slash international. Or you can use whichever, whichever method that you feel is appropriate and we will get your finances and we will use them for the glory of God. Amen. So if you know that you value something, you will pay for it. You will sponsor yourself. I thank God for the Holy Spirit putting that word in my mouth. Sponsor yourself because you love it. Sponsor yourself because you value it. Sponsor yourself because you know it will take your life to another level. And uh, so I uh, would like to share a, a little video with you, the video showing the dates. And uh, if you can share it with uh, our brethren, I hope I'll remember where I saved it in my, in my, <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, Jesus, you need to remind me where I saved it. I don't know. Sometimes I save things and I forget. Okay, it's right here. 
So. Our partners and friends of Remap International, that is Rescue Mission and Prayer Network International. This is Pastor Zipora, Wairimo Maina, aka Pastor Zippy. We want to invite you for our second in-person A Call to Global Prayer conference that will be held from Wednesday, 1st of May to Sunday, 5th of May, every day starting at 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. If you want to join us, you are most welcome. It will be at the La Quinta Inn and Suite. And for each single day, it's $100. But if you're coming for the four days, full days, we give you a discount of $25, so it's $300. Welcome, and God bless you. Amen. Yes, that is it. So $100, what does $100 do? $100 gives you a beautiful hotel, La Quinta Inn and Suite. Of course, the... the the, the the hotel room we are using the hall we are using beautiful nicely decorated i wish i can show you oh my god can i see let me see if i have some some uh, no i don't think i have a video to show you that but i'll make sure that i get one by tomorrow so that i can show you how beautiful it is but uh then you have a, a snack uh at uh, 10 a.m and it's not just a snack it is something good you eat some sandwich or something like that or if you're coming from africa you can have some guashe and doma <laughs> some sweet potatoes and aru roots and you know just a nice uh, snack for uh 10, 11 o'clock then we have a beautiful sumptuous lunch mm. And then you have uh, uh, 5 p.m. You have, uh, no, 4.30 4 p.m. We have another snack. And of course, with a drink. The snack is with a drink. And then in the evening at uh, 7 p.m., we have another beautiful dinner. You want to tell me those things? You cannot sponsor yourself. And then the love, the fellowship, meeting friends, making new connections. Some of us go there and come out with business networks. Others go there and we come out with people that are looking for people to give jobs. My friend, when you come to a place like that, you add value. You are a minister of the gospel. You've been looking for, for God to open doors for you to go and preach the gospel. This is the place to make connections with men and women of God that can open doors for you. Hey, can I tell you something? I am... Okay, let me stop. The Holy Spirit says I shut up. I will shut up. I will share it another day. Praise the name of the Lord. But I wanted to tell you, I... I have a lot of networks in this country, both from my nation, from the nations of Africa, from the nations of Asia, from South America. Maybe you want to go to Brazil and you don't know how to get there. It is so easy. Talk to Pastor Zippy. Maybe you want to go to Guatemala. Maybe you want to go to Mongolia. Sister Jojo is here. She'll tell us how to go to Mongolia. Praise the name of Jesus. You want to go to India? I've got so many partners from India. That is what, net, that is, you see, the problem with some of us, especially believers, we spiritualize even things that are supposed to be real. God is trying to open our eyes to see. Some of you are looking for business opportunity to sell your product in another place outside your locality. Come to these meetings and meet people and make connections. Hey, am I talking to somebody? Glory be to Jesus. You want to know how to go to Accra? Talk to Pastor William. He will wait for you at a cry in the, air, in the airport. Then you won't have to struggle. I love what God is doing in the body of Christ. But if we are so spiritual, you can't afford to pay $100 a day for all that information and all that knowledge. Hey, me, I will look for even $500 and go and pay. I love Jesus. Hallelujah. So it's the sweet hour of prayer. Enjoy this song with me. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer that calls me from a world of care and bids me at my Father's throne make all my wants and wishes known in seasons of distress and grief my soul has often found relief and oft escaped the tempter's snare by thy return sweet hour of prayer 
Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, the joy I feel, the bliss I share of those whose anxious spirits burn with strong desires for thy return. With such I hasten to the place where God my Savior shows his face and gladly take my station there and wait for the sweet hour of prayer. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, thy wing shall my petition bear. To him whose truth and faithfulness engage the waiting soul to bless, and since he bids me seek his face, believe his word and trust his grace, I'll cast on him my every care and wait for the sweet hour of prayer. Yes, you know, that's my favorite song at this hour, Sweet Hour of Prayer. Hey, I love it. I love it. I love it. I can play it all day long. Praise the name of Jesus. Welcome, for, uh, Sister Anne. Happy Resurrection Week to you. Uh, Cor Corinne Jr., thank you so much for being here. God bless you all. It is always a delight to meet at the prayer altar and to thank God. I just want to thank God for, the, uh, uh, for what he has done for us as we remember the, the death and resurrection of Christ. Something was going through my mind, and I was, uh, I have a message in my notes. Uh, I may not uh, preach it this morning. Maybe I'll preach it another time. But there's a message that the Lord was reminding me that uh, when Christ rose from the dead, do you know what happened? Death died. Amen. Death died. When Christ rose from the dead, death died. So I have a message uh, that I called when, the day when dead, <laughs> when when death died. So if you are here, uh, I want to encourage you to know that it doesn't matter what is going on in our lives. We have hope and we have eternity in our hearts. And we know that Christ overcame the grave. And so today we are blessed to know that even the grave is defeated, death is defeated. There's so much that is going on in our lives today that sometimes we feel very discouraged. I want you to know that whatever is dead in your life, it is not the end. Because Christ rose from the dead, we have the security of another chance. Maybe your pocket is dead, just like Christ rose from the dead. We speak resurrection to that pocket. Maybe your body is dead in, uh, in, uh, in sickness and infirmity. Some of your organs are not working properly. We declare life in those organs in the name of Jesus because the power that raised Christ from the dead is still at work in our lives. Maybe you are dead in sin as you listen to me. I want to to know that if you have not given your life to Jesus, you are alive physically, but spiritually you are dead and you need to have eternal life in your life that can only come through a, a, a reunion with Christ Jesus. This is a gift, a free gift that was paid for at Calvary. Welcome, Sister Rita and Joki. Good to see you. So I want you to know, beloved, that if your spirit is dead, you have an opportunity. Imagine you are still alive and God wants to have to, to, to have you back home. You know, we all left home. We all left home. All of us. The day Adam and Eve sinned, they left home. Eden was our home. Eden is not a place, by the way. Eden is not a physical place. Eden is is the presence of God. Eden is the place where we are connected with God. When they sinned, they left home. We have all left home. 
But you want to know something? Jesus Christ came, died, paid the price and the punishment that was meant for Adam and us, his, his generations. And today we have access back home. Oh, glory be to Jesus. We have access back home. And that access is through a simple, very, very simple thing that is not complicated. Believe in your heart that Jesus saves. Allow him to come and by faith receive new life and confess with your mouth that he is Lord. Then the Holy Spirit will help you to live that life that is in line with what the word of God says. That is what salvation is all about. Anybody making salvation complicated for you? I don't know. They tell you to bring which sacrifice. I don't know to bring which seed. No, there is no seed to sow. There is no sacrifice to give. There is nothing to do. Just bring your heart. Bring it openly and say, Father, I acknowledge, I realize that I left home. Through, through the DNA of Adam, we are all born outside home. Who was born in Eden here? Nobody was born in Eden. We were all born outside Eden. We are all outside home. But God is saying, come back. I have paid the price. You were supposed to die, but I have paid the price for your death. When we talk of death, unfortunately, many people are not realizing it is not physical death. It is spiritual death. When God told Adam and Eve, don't sin, because the day you sin, you will die. They did not die physically. Adam lived for another 900 years, but he died instant spiritual death. He was disconnected from God because the spirit of God left and there was no longer any un unity and connection to God. People don't seem to understand what salvation is. That is what happened at the day of Pentecost. The Holy Spirit came back to his residence. And from that day, the apostles did marvelous things. And the gospel is here because of that day. But before that day, it was preceded by Christ dying and rising. So today you have a chance. Are you there and you are not born again? I know that the gospel we are preaching, many people are preaching nowadays. Is, is Let me tell you. There are so many people, Pastor William, that are in church, but they are not born again. Because the gospel of salvation has been put aside at the gospel of prosperity. So people are told, come to church and you will get a big car. You will get a good house. You get a good wife. You will get this. You get money. Yes, all those things are in the package of salvation because the Bible is clear in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 and 34. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things. My friend, which things is God talking about? Go and read Matthew 6 from 25. You will understand the things God is talking about in verse 33. So when you seek the kingdom of God first and his righteousness, you leave all the word righteousness in that statement. Say, Seek ye the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you. Read it properly. Amen. Good morning, Sister Chantal. Seek ye the kingdom of God and its righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So we have so many people in the church that are not born again because they came to church to receive things from God, but they have not received the God of things. Hello, did I say it properly? They have received the things of God but they don't want the God of those things. They are like the seven women that the Bible talks about in the book of, uh, is it Jeremiah or Isaiah? Seven women will tell one man, give us your name. We want to use your name, but we don't want to become your wives. But give us your name. Let us use your title, but we are not your wives. There are many people who are like that in the house of the Lord. The time has come for us to bring back the gospel of salvation and repentance to the church. 
That is the gospel that was preached by the prophets. It's the gospel that was preached by the apostles. It's the gospel that was preached by our, our fathers who have gone ahead of us. That's why we are born again today. But we have uh, people today, the only thing they, they, are, they are preaching is how big a meeting was or how much money we have spent to do a call to global prayer. I don't care whether the budget is 32000 That's not the measure of success. I literally don't need that money for myself. I need it for the budget. It's not a measure of the anointing. The measure of the anointing is the impact that the word of God will have in your life. The transformation. Praise the name of Jesus. So don't look for the, the things of God. Look for the God of things. When you look for the God of things, the things will follow. Psalms 24 verse 1 is one of my favorite scriptures. The earth and its fullness and the people therein and the resources therein belong to the Lord. So he can give you anything. Should be I, uh, the same book of I, uh, Psalms 50, maybe 50 verse 19. Is it 50 verse 19? Cattle on a thousand hills belong to the Lord. I have had people misquote that scripture. Eh? They say, you know, eh, eh, a thousand cattle on the hill. A thousand cattle? No, it is cattle on a thousand hills. It's not a thousand cattle on the hills. Uh -uh. It is cattle on a thousand hills. I don't know how many cattle are in one hill. They belong to the Lord. And he, uh, I believe it's Psalm 50 verse 19 where David was saying, sacrifices you don't desire. It's a contrary term because if God wanted sacrifice, he can go and slaughter one of the cattle in, another, in his thousand hills. We need to bring the God of things. Then the things of God will come. Praise the name of Jesus. So join us every day at this altar. There are anointed men and women of God. On this altar, we don't entertain you to make you happy, but we entertain your spirit, your soul, and your body with the word of God. We give you the medicine for solution for what you're going through. We give you medicine for life now and life after. We give you a dose of fear not. You know, I hear people saying that the word fear not appears 365 days in the Bible. Uh, I mean, 365 times in the Bible. Just see how God is strategic. 365 times the word fear not, meaning a dose of fear not every day. That's why you must not be afraid of the news you're hearing. You must not be afraid of the diseases you're hearing. You must not be afraid of the circumstances that you're hearing around your city. You know the Bible says, fear not. I am with you to the end of age. I love Jesus. Of course, because he loved me first. I'm just reciprocating. But my desire every day is that I may know him and the power that raised him from the dead. That's why we are excited. Amen. So God bless you. I want to uh, I say prayer, then we shall study the word of God. Or let me study the word of God today first, because what I'm doing here is what I was supposed to do last week, but I missed it. Praise the name of Jesus, because I prayed, 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 then the time was up. So I didn't preach what I wanted to preach, but I, I, I said I'll, I'll go ahead and share with you. Today, we are continuing on the study of the work of the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer, and we have looked at so many things. Thank you so much, Pastor William, for that uh, scripture. Isaiah 4 1. In that day, seven men will uh, seven women will take hold of one man and say, We will eat our own food and provide our own clothes. Only let us be called by your name, take away our disgrace. That is what people want to do today. <laughs> Jesus, I want to wear my clothes, I want to walk the way I want, I want to relate with whoever I want, I want to go wherever I want, I want to do whatever I want, but just give me your name. Let me be called a Christian because I attend church. Let my name appear in the register. Mm. Be careful. Be careful. Let your salvation be the light of the world and the salt of the earth. People should be drawn to your light. Amen. Mm? People should be drawn to your light. Sister Chantal, yes, receive those cattle on a thousand hills. Don't ask Jesus for one cow. You know, some people go to Jesus, Jesus, give me one cow. Don't get, don't ask him for one cow. Tell him, give me the cattle on a thousand hills. <laughs> I don't know that there are billions or millions. All I know is that he has cattle on a thousand hills. 
and he can give it to you anytime he wants to give it to you. Praise the name of Jesus. So what is the word of God today? We are continuing on the work of the Holy Spirit and the foundation of this preaching, uh, this ministry of teaching, this ministry of exhorting uh, the name of Jesus, this ministry of uh, uh, digging into the scripture. It is from the book of Ezekiel chapter 37. The Lord spoke to us at the beginning of this season that he is restoring and bringing order out of chaos. The Bible says that Ezekiel saw a valley of very dry old bones, very dry old bones, no order. Some of them were east, others were west. You could find a body of a man that had died. The skull was uh, a thousand miles and the shoulder bone was the other thousand miles. So there was no order in that body of dry bones. But the Lord, through his word and through the spirit of God, he brought not only back the bones together, but he put flesh on them. He put ligaments on them. He put everything that is needed. And then the breath of God came and gave them life. And from that teaching, the Lord has been speaking to us about how the Holy Spirit wants to transform our lives so that we can be useful in the kingdom of God. The Bible says that even after the word had been spoken and the, the form of men had been recreated and there was a great army. It was not yet alive until the breath of God was released by the second prophetic word of Ezekiel. And that's the level at which we want to be. We want to be at a point where we are not just Christians, but we are Christians that are active. We are Christians that are, are, are alive. We are Christians that are causing a change. This was an army. This army was a big army. But it was not effective until the breath of God came upon it. Jesus told the apostles in Jerusalem, don't leave Jerusalem. Tarry ye in Jerusalem until I send you the Holy Spirit of God, who will empower you to go and do what I have told you to do. What is it that God called us to do? God has given us a very simple assignment on earth. People complicate the work of the ministry. Listen. Everybody that is born again, I don't care what position you occupy, whether you are like Pastor Zippy who has a, a broadcast online every day, or you are the Pope, or you are the Archbishop. The Bible says each and every one of us that is a believer in Jesus Christ, our commission was to become witnesses. Who is a witness? A witness is a validator of an event. A witness is somebody who says, I saw and I heard, and I can confidently say that what is being said is true. If you've never stood in a court of law, maybe you don't understand the work of a witness. I have had the privilege to stand twice at the court of law as a witness. The first time some thugs came to our school where I used to work, they beat people at night, they beat our watchman and they stole some things. And because I was the school principal and I was living in the school, I had to go and give a witness of the activities that took place that night. And I thank God because my witness and other people's witness that we were called, it was true. It was proved to be true. Why did I allow myself to stand in a court of law and become uh, expose myself to a, to, to a dangerous situation? But it's because I was a witness. I had seen it and I had heard it. Have you heard Jesus and have you seen him? You are a witness. You don't have to be an evangelist or a pastor or an apostle. Everybody today is taking a title because they think it's the title that preaches Jesus. No, if you are born again, you have something to tell somebody. Come to Jesus. I am on fire for Christ and I'm praying for souls. I'm praying for God to change and transform people. I'm praying for our sons that are, are, are lost in hopelessness because they went to school, they studied, they graduated, they've got degrees, masters, I don't know what, and there are no jobs. Then they are doing drugs. Others are turning to crimes just to make a living. We are there condemning them instead of asking God, what should we do? We need to start by, first of all, ministering to their spirit with the word of God, because only when you are changed from the inside can the outside be changed. Good morning, Sister Ifrit. Good to see you, my, <laughs> my sister, yes. Hey, Sister Murabula, nice to see you, my sister. God bless you. I feel, let me tell you, revival is here. 
Revival begins with when we start feeling and realizing that first of all, we are not worthy before God. If it was not for salvation, we would not be here. The day you realize what Jesus did for you, then you start having love for sinners. You desire to share the gospel. That is how revival comes. Revival is not because Pastor Zippy is doing a prayer meeting. The prayer meeting is actually a charging station for people to be recharged to go out there and do the work of the ministry. I hope that is going to be the outcome of our prayer ministry this year. That we are gathering together to pray like the apostles in the upper room, asking God to give us our cities, to give us our children back from prisons of drugs and alcoholism, to give us our husbands back from the houses of prostitution and immorality, to give us our mothers back from rebellion and uh, feminism. You know, I hate feminism. Can somebody listen to me? I don't like feminism. It is not biblical. Women, God did not call you to be a feminist. You are called to be feminine. And whoever is hearing me this on Facebook, you might not like what I'm saying, but it's the truth. Feminism is not of God. It is of the devil. Where you want to go above the head. You are the neck. You want to go above the head. When did the order of God change? That's why marriages are not working. Then you are like, there, but Pastor ZP, you are not, you are not married. You don't know what women are going through. I know. Who told you I don't know? Oh, you don't know I've been there? Oh, you think I became single like Mary, the mother of Joseph? Eh? Ah, the Mary, Mary, the mother of Jesus. Eh? A virgin gave birth. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know me, I'm not ashamed of talking of my history. That is my history. I want to encourage a young girl listening to me here. Oh, they've labeled you single mother. I don't know they've labeled you. You know, every people... People see a woman who's got a child and they are not married and they assume we are all promiscuous. Who told you? We are not promiscuous. There are so many promiscuous married women that I know, by the way. Some of them I know. Promiscuous and they're in marriage. Just because we have children, one, one day it was an accident and it happened. Mm. Young ladies, don't abort. Bring me those children. I'll take care of them. If you are there and you are listening to me and you are pregnant and your friend has told you to go and abort because you don't want people to know you're pregnant, come, give me that baby. I'll take care of them. Praise the name of Jesus. The time has come for us to embrace the, the gospel of the gospel of love and repentance, but the gospel of truth. We are not telling you to go and sin, but if you have sinned, so what? I said something that my father said last week or two weeks ago. My goodness, I'm still meditating on it. I need to listen to the whole message because I just had that statement. I guess it was meant for me as I was passing by. He said, if you've been hurt and wounded, heal in the house. Oh my God, that was powerful. He was trying to address those people who get hurt in the church and they are there saying, I'll never go back to that church again. My dear, it is worse where you are going out there. You better heal in the house. Heal at home. Hey, that was a powerful message by my dad. Heal at home. Stop leaving the fellowship. Stop leaving the church. Where you are going out there, there is a marauding uh, form of a thing called, it says like a lion. Praise the name of Jesus. Sister Rehema, I'm sorry, I can't mix it with Swahili because my congregation is from across the world. I have my sister here from Mongolia who does not understand Swahili. So I preach in English. And thank you for raising that. God bless you. So I want you to know that God loves you. So revival has started. But do you know where revival begins? It begins in prayer. Let me tell you, we can shout and do all the meetings we want to do and do all the, the, the whatever we want to do. If we are not praying, revival will not come. Revival begins at the knees. The other day I prayed like the man who asked God, give me Scotland or I, die, or I die. I told God, give me America or I die. Do you know what that means? And I'm serious. If God is not with me to do this ministry, let me go where he is. Either he comes here or I go there. There are no two ways about it. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. How many understand what I'm saying? That's where I am right now. My sister, sister 
I want to see the results. So if God is not coming, let me go. Now I know why Moses was saying, remove my name from the book of life if you will not save these people. Yes, Sister Ifrit, I'm serious. I'm, something is burning inside of me. So I'm not just doing another prayer meeting to do a conference in town. That's not what is calling me. I'm praying that that prayer meeting will be fruitful. Out of it, we shall go to the field and bring more souls to the kingdom. Even in that meeting, I pray that God will save people. I want to go and invite unbelievers. By the way, I have started. Don't just invite believers. Invite unbelievers. Praise the name of Jesus. So God bless you. Thank you for supporting this ministry. So what is the word that I was supposed to bring to you today? The Bible talks about the work of the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer. And one of the things that the Holy Spirit does in your life, why you need the Holy Spirit. He is the one who brings illumination. 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 I want you to read with me the book of uh, John chapter 14, verse 26. Let me look for my, oh, okay, let me, let me stop looking sideways. I'm told broadcasting looking sideways is not professional. So let me look here. <laughs> John 14, 26. Let's hear what the Bible says. My sister, my brother, you cannot make it without the Holy Spirit in this life. You can read your Bible 10, 20 times a day, but if you do not have the Holy Spirit to interpret it for you, we've already spoken that in another message. That there, are, there are many things I've spoken about the work of the Holy Spirit. One of them is interpretation of the scripture. Now, this is illumination. So, but the comforter, I'm reading John 14, 26, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Who was this word spoken to? These words were spoken by Jesus to his disciples. And he was telling them, I have taught you so many things in the last three years. So many things. Three and a half years. Remember, these people were not sitting in a classroom and taking notes. I hope you know that. They were not sitting in a lecture room to take notes. They were in the field with Jesus. He would go to Capernaum, then he'd go to, to, uh, to, to Judea, then he goes to uh, the Saika, he goes to Samaria, and he would do things and he would speak. He would go to the mount and sit down for three days and people would follow him there and just he would just teach them the word of God. He would go and find fishermen in the sea and he would borrow the boat of Peter and sit there at the shore and the people are out there and he is speaking to them. They are not taking notes. And then the time came for him to leave. Then he said, now that I'm leaving, some of you are very sad. And indeed, they were very sad. Hmm? And Jesus said, don't be sad. Now I understand sometimes why Jesus had to leave. You see, Jesus in his physical body, he was limited by his humanity. He could only be in one place at a particular time. He could not be in Judea and Galilee at the same time. He couldn't be in Bethlehem and Nazareth at the same time. He either had to be here or there, just like we are. And that is why when you see your pastors, stop making them angels. They are not angels. They are human beings. They are limited. They have capacity which they cannot do some things. Jesus himself was limited of movement. Yet he came because of the world. He did, not become, he did not come because of the Jews of his household or the 12 apostles. No, he came because of the world. So he says, I will leave. And the disciples were very sad when he told them that. I have to go to my father. And they were feeling very sad. Peter even said, you're not going. Oh, you're not going. I'll <laughs> I think it's Philip. Is it Philip who said, I'll follow you where you are going? <laughs> I love the humanity of Jesus' apostles. 
<laughs> I just love their behavior. You know, I like seeing myself inside there. That's why the Bible says in Romans chapter 8 and verse 1, there is now no condemnation for them that are in Christ Jesus. You know, some of you are not enjoying your Christianity because you are living with people who are condemning you every day. They only see the shortcoming in you. They never see the humanity in you and the anointing of God in you. They only see the mistakes. But if you become a, a student of the word, you realize that you are still a human being but the anointing of God is in you. But to empower you so that you can live a life that will be pleasing to God, you need the Holy Ghost. So Jesus said, I've got to go so that I can release the paracletos. I can release the helper. This helper will not only be inside me. No, I want you to experience what I have experienced. You see, the Bible says, at the baptism of Jesus in the book of Matthew chapter 3, the heavens opened. The Holy Spirit came like a dove, rested on him and in him. And the Holy Spirit led him to the desert for 40 days. After 40 days, he came back with the anointing. And having overcome Satan, the Bible says he started doing miracles until the people of Nazareth in the book of Mark chapter 6, they are asking, isn't this the son of, of Joseph? Isn't this, actually, they didn't say the son of Joseph. Apology, I misquoted the Bible. Isn't this the son of Mary? Isn't this the carpenter's son? Aren't his brothers, James and Jude and, uh, and his sisters, are they not here with us? Where did he get this power of performing these things he's performing? The way they will talk about you when you go, get born again and allow Christ to dwell in you and you start doing things that are unusual. They will talk about you. You are so worried about people talking about you. Ah, come I show you how I know how to ignore when they talk. Shut your ears, shut your eyes, just to see what God wants you to see and hear what God wants you to hear. Let them do what they want. Let them say what they want. Today I posted, I, I, I stole somebody from, a, a post from somebody else and I told her, I've got to steal this one and post it. Me, I'm active in social media. So I posted a, a picture of many black birds, but in the middle of the black bird is a yellow one. That yellow one is Pastor Zippy and whoever else wants to be like Pastor Zippy. Don't be like everybody. Be different. Hallelujah. So Jesus, they said, talking about him. Where did he get this power? Others said he's Belzebub. He's the, 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 the leader of demons. Like many Africans will say. Yes, Sister Marianne. Hallelujah. It has provoked you. Yes, be the yellow bird among the black ones. Hey, I love it. They call you the black sheep of the family. Tell them, yes, all the other sheep are white. I want to be the black one. It's okay. Be unique. Don't do things the way they are done. Don't compete with anybody. God did not create you to be competing. But for you to be able to do that, you need the Holy Spirit because he is the mind of God. The Holy Spirit is the mind of God. So when the Holy Spirit comes on you, he illuminates. You see, illumination is when light comes. I wrote a quote, but I couldn't find it. I was looking for it. I wrote a quote last week because this message, I, I prepared it last week. I wrote a quote about illumination. I will look for it and I'll tell you what it says. But you see, only the Holy Spirit can bring that light. It's like turning on a bulb. You see, before electricity came, most of us were depending on the firewood fire. Me, I was raised up in that traditional fire. Sister Chantal, I grew up in the village where we have three stones and firewood. But today we don't use that because we have light. I just enter into my bedroom and I, oops, I enter into my studio. Oop. That is what the Holy Spirit does when he comes into your life. He illuminates the word of God in your life and you know what to do. That's why reading the Bible without the Holy Ghost is a waste of time. The Bible without the Holy Spirit is a big book with white pages and black small letters. But the Bible with the Holy Ghost is a book full of movie and video and picture and flower and everything nice you are looking for. 
Hallelujah. I can tell you I've read it for many years. I'm enjoying reading it every day. Where am I today? You know, I read my Bible in one year. Let me tell you where I am in the, in the Bible this year. I read the Bible in one year. I am on the... What? I can't find it. Don't worry. It's, it's lost somewhere. Oh, okay. I am on... I am on day 90. So I am in uh, Psalm 38 in the Old Testament from Genesis. I am in Luke chapter 8 in the New Testament. And I am in, no, I'm in Psalm 38, the book of Psalms from Psalm 1. I am in Luke chapter 8 in the New Testament from Matthew. And I am in the book of Numbers 29 from Genesis. Yes, I've read through. Genesis, Exodus, now I'm in Numbers. And in one year, I must finish up to Revelation. You know what I always tell people here? Nobody argues with the doctor because they believe the doctor has read books about medicine. Nobody argues with a pilot because they believe they have read the books for piloting. I'm just giving you an example. These are not books for piloting. Nobody argues with a teacher because they've gone to college and read books on uh, teaching. But everybody can argue about the Bible, which they don't read. Shame on you. I will always tell you, yes. People say we are being proud when we say we've read the Bible. Yes, I have read it and I will read it. You, you as you read, on Sunday, you actually don't read. You wait for the pastor to read for you and interpret for you. And you are here arguing with us what the Bible says. Hey, how do like Apostle Paul sitting at the Aeropagus in Athens? I'm a Christian apologist. Hmm. Father, we thank you. I don't, I'm telling you, I do not like, I, I want somebody to come argue with the doctor when the doctor tells them they are suffering from this disease. Do you argue with the doctor? We are telling you you are suffering from a disease called SIN and you need the cure. The cure is in the Bible. The doctor gives you a manual to go and read at home and tells you, follow instructions, okay? You'll be taking three, three pills two times a day, okay? You take eight glasses of water a day, all right? You can even believe the guy you go to see in the gym to tell you how you can cut weight because he has read about it. But you want to argue about the Bible, which you don't read. Oh, God, have mercy on us. The devil is a liar. Am I talking to somebody? You are too quiet. My church is very quiet. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus, I give you praise and glory and honor for this wonderful morning that you've given unto us. We thank you for the gift of resurrection, the gift of life, the gift of eternal life. Father, we have crossed over from death to life because Christ is risen from the grave. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We honor you this morning. Thank you for the gift of salvation. Thank you for the blood of Jesus that was shed at Calvary, that we may receive eternity, oh my God, that we shall not perish but have eternal life. We thank you, Father, for the forgiveness of the many sins that we have committed. Thank you, Father, because you are still in the business of saving. Thank you because as long as you have not returned, we have room to repent of our sins and come back home. I thank you, Lord Jesus, because the Holy Spirit is the one who gives us the illumination of your word. Holy Spirit, we desire to have you today. We desire to have you in our plans today. We desire to have you in our activities today. We desire to have you guide our footsteps today. Wherever we go, we want to be led of you. The Bible says that uh, the children of Israel, they knew the works of the Lord, but Moses knew the ways. He knew what to do. He knew where to go. We want to graduate from knowing the works to knowing the ways. Because the works, my father, are just a limitation of the God who does things. But when we know your ways, we will also understand the way, the, the, the works that you have in us, oh my father. I worship you this morning. Thank you for these brethren that are here this morning to receive this word every day. So that in their 24 hour cycle, Jehovah, they have food, the spiritual food, living water, the bread of life that will take us through, my God, so that we are not malnourished in our spiritual lives. In the name of Jesus.
I worship you, Jesus, because even though we are passing through the valleys of the shadow of death, some of them because of physical death, others because of spiritual death, others because of financial death, whatever valley of the shadow of death we are passing through this morning, we thank you because we shall not perish in that valley. For thy rod and thy staff, they comfort us, O oh God. And you are taking us through because you have a good plan for us. I thank you because this new beginning of the month, you you have called us to be here at this time, at this moment, at this season, so that, Lord, you can bless us and be with us even as we continue to be the witnesses, the witnesses of your kingdom in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I commit our plans to you. I commit our children to you. I commit our marriages to you. I commit our businesses to you. I pray for my uh, myself, my God, and the brethren that you've given me. I thank you for each and every every person or who is a, a partaker of our ministry. In the name of Jesus, I commit the upcoming conference before you. Thank you, Father, because you are the provider. We are not we may not have the finances for ourselves, but we know you are the owner. And because you want to glorify yourself, Lord, that is why you are going to raise these funds that everybody will say, it is not Pastor Zippy, it is not Bishop uh, Paul, it is not uh, 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 the committee, it is Jesus who came through. I want to thank you in advance, Jehovah God, because of the mighty works that you are going to do in this conference. We pray that every wall that is hindering your people from going to church. It shall be broken and more people will start coming to the kingdom of God in many numbers. For the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we break down the walls that are hindering people from coming to the kingdom. Father, if it is we who have created the walls because of hatred, we have created walls because of unforgiveness. We have created walls because of church competition. We have created walls, my father, because of gossip in the church. I break those walls today by denouncing everything that is not of God in the mighty name of Jesus. And I pray, bring Lord many to the kingdom. Father, we, we open many entrance doors, but we close the exit door. We declare that when these people come in, they will stay in the kingdom. They will not leave. We refuse our churches to be hallways, my father. They've become hallways. They've become anchors enter and exit. I pray from today, the exit door be shut and the entrance door be opened in multitudes. Lord, when they come in the way they ran into the temple in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost, oh my father, out of that sanctuary, out of what they will receive. They will not exit, but they will go out as disciples. They will go to Samaria like um, Philip did. They will go to, 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 to the ends of the earth, my father, like Apostle Paul did. They will go all over, not because they are exiting the church, but because they are taking the witness of the gospel. This is my prayer that, Lord, our conference will be an empowering ground. It will be a refueling ground. It will be a place, my father, where giftings shall be uh, reenacted again. Visions and dreams shall be reborn. You told me you are bringing order out of the chaos. The chaos in the church, you're bringing order. The chaos in the government, you're bringing order. The chaos in the families, you're bringing order. Father, the chaos in our nations, you're bringing order because you're in the business of saving. I worship you as I bless this day. I pray that the favor of the Lord shall follow us wherever we go and we shall experience the mercy of the Lord in everything that we do today. We receive the victory of today and declare no weapon forged against us shall prosper. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we receive illumination of everything, my Father, that you want us to fulfill today. Until we meet again on this altar, Jehovah Father, may your name be glorified. We decree and you increase. Oh, we diminish as Christ is uh, blowing out and his name, my Father Majesty. Let your power be um, experienced in every place that we are in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for my brethren. Bless them. Bless the work of their hands and bless our families and everything that is called by our names. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Is it amen or amen? Sister Mariana, I see that amen. <laughs> God bless you guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, Sister Nancy Kibara, thank you for being here, woman of God. Please keep in touch. Don't disappear too much. We need to catch up. And I know that the Lord will bless us. It says, well, tomorrow I'll be here to continue with the ministry of the word. Uh, Brother Joseph Commander, thank you so much. I see you. God bless you. Bye. Please share the broadcast and let somebody else get blessed by the ministry that goes on on this altar.